Hi, this is Ian Burgett, XR Bootcamp instructor, and I'll be helping guide you through the weeks ahead. Today, we'll be talking about troubleshooting in the Unity game engine. Now, this isn't a comprehensive guide, we won't be covering everything, but we will talk about compile errors, runtime errors, as well as logic errors, where there isn't a message, but still something is going wrong when you run the game. We'll also talk about the mentality of where to look for answers and how to find exactly what you need. For the sake of the demonstration, I've downloaded the Connect4 starter kit from the Asset Store, and I've made some modifications that have introduced errors. I'm going to walk through as if I don't know the solutions and just talk about the process of finding an answer when we don't have those answers already in our library of knowledge. So going over to the Unity game engine, already I can see in my console, I have an error message. Um, oftentimes the first reaction when there's an error message is to go to the internet, search, try to find an answer, but it's worth it to investigate a little bit further and find out some information before you start your searches. Step one, read through the whole thing. Try to get your best understanding as written before you move on. No overload for method get component takes one argument. So already it's telling me that there's something wrong with get component. Um, I can see from this that it's inside of the game controller class and it's at line 79. I'll go ahead and double click into that. And in my text editor, we see that it's highlighting this section here for button play again. Now, in this version, you don't know what I'm trying to do, but I do. So generally speaking, it's easiest to understand what you're hoping to achieve before you move on. In this case, I'm trying to take this play again original color for the button, and I want to assign it to the current uh, button play again material color so that it's always the same each time. Um, for whatever reason, when I try to get the component to find its material and its color, it's failing to find the button play again. Or more specifically, it's telling me that the get component shouldn't have this argument for button play again. So to begin with, let's Google the error itself and see if there's more specific information here. So. I'll just copy this with control C. I'll move over to the internet and run a search. In this case, I'm actually using DuckDuckGo, which sometimes has more relevant results than Google, but your mileage may vary. It's really the same process either way. Now that first search is actually a very poor search because I've included too much specific information. Um, what I want to do is I want to just know about the error, not about game controller, not about something specific to my project so that I can try to understand what's going wrong a little bit more. In this case, I'll go ahead and cut out everything that's specific to my project. And now I just have the error number and no overload method takes one argument. I'll search again. And now we see a Unity Stack Overflow answer. And just a little farther down, we see the documentation for the error. I'll go ahead and open that up first and just skim through, try to get an understanding of what this function is supposed to do and maybe I'm calling it wrong. That's one thing to always be checking. Are you assuming you've done something correctly when really it might be as simple as using the wrong function, writing the function wrong, missing a parameter or an argument, etc. cetera. So in, in this case, a call was made to a class method, but no definition of the method takes the specified number of arguments. So associating that over here, they're talking about get component. That's what was called out. So it's telling me get component with the renderer class is not supposed to take an argument. Now I know I want to be connecting this to button play again. So there must be something about how I'm arranging this function that isn't correct. If we look a little farther down, we can see it reinforces with some examples how you would encounter this error. It's showing us this will work because example method has a definition with no arguments. This will work because example method has a definition with one argument, uh, but this won't. Now is a good time to get a little more specific. So we know what the error means, but how is it relevant to us with our unity function in particular? 
I didn't write get component, that's part of the engine, so this will have some documentation. Let's find that first. Going back to get component, Unity, C sharp, always good keywords, and let's see what we find. It pays to know how to read the API documentation properly. You'll want to know how to read the declaration. You'll want to know how to read the various um, arguments that go into your functions. It just makes things so much easier when you don't have to try to copy paste text from sample code. Um, if you can write your own code just based on this information here. And they do tend to have those examples as well, just to get you across the initial hump. So in this case, it looks like the, there are two different ways to declare get component and neither one matches what we're doing. I could either have it with get component of type here, which looks similar to what I want, except I'm not specifying a type. I'm specifying the component, um, excuse me, the game object that I want the component to be searched on. Um, and in this case, I think I already spot the error. They're putting their game object at the beginning with dot notation to then get the component. Um, if I scroll down further, that's reinforced by seeing my code already uses the angle brackets for the component class with no argument. And again, dot notation for the uh, game object that we're accessing the information from. I think I already have the answer, but to go through a little bit further, the next step would be after taking that general knowledge to get more specific. So now we could try searching for a stack overflow answer for us. In this case, I'll try writing it out with um, not too much specific information, but all the relevant things we've seen. So we want the error message itself Copying this again. Cutting out everything that is specific to our project. And we'll include the function itself. Get component. And I'll even take uh, up to this point. Paste that in. And then maybe other people are seeing the issue without the renderer class, so we'll cut that. Maybe people are seeing it with no arguments or with other arguments, so I'll cut that. And it should essentially fill in the gaps for us when we're running the search. Uh, don't always pick just the first answer that you see. It's worth it to keep checking. So let's open up maybe the first three and read through what we have. Um, when I'm in a hurry and I'm just trying to find relevant information, one shorthand I will do is I will actually skip ahead to the answers and read them first. And then, and only then, if I don't understand, I can go back and I can find out more. So skipping ahead a little bit, skipping ahead a little bit, what do we have? This one here, it doesn't have any answers, so I might call that quits early on. Uh, this one here, it's worth checking what the answer time is. So this was from 2015. That's quite old. Some stuff, yes, it will still be relevant. Some stuff won't. Um, when you're looking for these answers, try to look for something that has um, the same major and minor Unity version that you have. Um, it's always fine to start with something very old, but you have to know that like, if you run into an issue and following the answer you find doesn't resolve it, it might just be the version. You might need to find more relevant information. So this answer here, this is from uh, 2021, originally answered in 2018. So already we can see it's more recent. Uh, and they talk about using the get component command. They say it's used to fetch a component. You can set properties on that component. And in their example, we see get component used without an argument. And then we see it is passed along to the health text component. Uh, and then they reinforce what we already learned earlier, which get component with an argument uh, is an error. And, and now we know technically you can do that, but not in the way that they're showing here. So back to writer, 
let's try making our change based on all the information we've learned. We can remove this segment here and save and check to see if Unity still gives us an error. Um, I see a warning which I'll want to resolve, but no error. So already we're on the right track. Um, I will say that I think that the documentation before the Stack Overflow was most relevant because it did show using the dot notation to find the component on this specific game object. I'll save that. And we'll return to Unity. And without, with warnings, but without an error, I should be able to play. It'll reload the scripts. And sure enough, we're playing Connect 4, only not quite. This happens all the time. You're moving quickly, you're making lots of code changes, you introduce more errors than just one. The first thing is potentially resolved, or at least um, put on hold for now, and we're now running into a second error. Um, in this case, I see it's on a different line. It's no reference exception, object reference not set to an instance of an object, and it found this on line 87. Now, the first step I would always do is I'd find out more about null reference exceptions if I did not understand them. You may already know, I already know, so we can skip that step. Null reference means that it's trying to get information from a variable that we never assigned to anything. That's what, if we Googled it now, we would find. So putting a pin in this, Let's go to the location and try a different method of troubleshooting. Line 87, winning text set active false. I wanna confirm that we're seeing what we think we're seeing, which is probably that winning text is a null reference. To do that, I'm gonna use a breakpoint. Um, in writer, that's done by pressing this icon right here on the left. Um, if you're using Visual Studio, it's a very similar method, um, and I believe both use F9 as the shortcut to add or remove breakpoints. If you're not familiar, the breakpoint is going to run the game. It'll run normally. When it reaches the code execution on that line, the breakpoint will stop everything. It will actually freeze the editor, and it will allow you to inspect what the current variables are set to, uh, what references are there, what values are there in a human-readable way. So now that we're checking what winning text is with our breakpoint, let's go back to Unity and, oh, excuse me. Um, we're not gonna go back and press the play button. We're actually going to use this method at the top right uh, using attach to Unity editor and play and then the debug icon. If, it's, if this is the first time you're doing this, it may ask you to confirm you want to enable debugging in Unity um, if you've done it before with other projects, it may already do so. So right now, it's actually holding for us because it immediately uh, hit the breakpoint. And that will often happen. If you're debugging something, if you're troubleshooting something in start, it'll almost invariably hit that breakpoint. Um, if there's something running on update, it'll hit that breakpoint very quickly. Um, so you can tell it's on the breakpoint because of the arrow indicator. And now we can find out a lot more information. We can see here, let me expand the view. We have an active scene. We have this um, in, the, in, the, in the context. This is referring to wherever the breakpoint was triggered for the class game controller. So we can think of that as our game controller. And within that, we see all of the parameters in their current state. Um, be aware a breakpoint is uh, stopped before the line that you've stopped on, not after. So at this point, we have not tried to run winning text dot set activate false. Um, and one way we can see that is if we're looking for winning text, you can see it is indeed null. Um, and then if the error message is correct, and I can check that by moving forward, I'll use step into to step to the next line. It's trying to uh, dive in 
further and it's found that we have uh, object reference not set to an instance of, instance of an object. So sure enough, we know now that winning text is null for some reason. Let's go ahead and stop. Now that we've confirmed that, let's back up and let's find out why. It's possible we just never put in any code to define, to uh, set winning text, even though it's been declared. So at this point, I'll just remove my breakpoint and search for winning text and find the very first definition, or excuse me, uh, declaration. So it's a private game object. And then at any point, do I set it to some value? I do. I have uh, at some point, here we go on start. So that should happen before other things, generally speaking. If winning text is a null, set winning text to be game object find winning text. So um, at this point, if I didn't know what was happening here, I could look up, all right, what is the find function doing? What is um, winning text supposed to be in this context? Um, but instead, since I already know that game object find is trying to find an object named winning text, um, I just want a breakpoint here and see if it is or is not finding it. Um, another thing you can do, I'll just do all here. Another thing you can do is set two breakpoints and verify that they're hitting in the order you would expect. I already know that start is going to happen before any other call in this context, but if I didn't know that, if I wasn't sure what was coming at what time, that would be a good time to run both breakpoints and compare the two. Um, for now though, let's verify what's happening here on this line. All right, it just hit the breakpoint. Again, that makes sense, it's on start. We can see it's um, frozen here on the editor. And we see this is equal to the game controller. Perfect. Uh, and we wanna find out what find is returning if it is being set. So I'm gonna step a little farther forward. I'm actually gonna use step into again. And now it's running winning text equals. So it, it was null before. And I'm just scrolling through to see if I have any information. Still null here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, because find is a built-in function, rather than stepping into it, I'm going to go a little farther. I'm going to use step over. And we'll see it's moved on to the next function rather than exploring what's inside of find. Now what I see here is winning text is still null. So find return to null reference. That tells me that I must be doing something wrong with find. And this is a good point for me to stop and just double check. Like, again, we're talking about checking assumptions. Um, did I name the wrong thing? Um, is the find uh, too limited in scope? Is there something else going wrong? So I want winning text to be found. If I go over here and I look for it, I see it's here. But there is one very obvious difference. Winning text here uses a lowercase w. Oh, let's not change things up too much. Winning text in my code is using a capital W. So already that breakpoint has kind of walked me backwards to the point of checking, all right, is it an error in my code? No, in reality, it's an error in my scene in my hierarchy. So I'm gonna go ahead now and rename this to match my code. Oh, let's try that one more time. And now with it matching, I'll leave the breakpoint on and run this one more time. Nope, oh, did it not run? Oh, there we go, it just took a moment. Winning text is currently null. Again, we broke at the beginning of the line. Let's step over. 
Uh, we're now running this section here, still null. Let's step over again. We're now moving on to create field and ah, winning text is now a game object. That is a good sign. That is enough for me to think perhaps we're done here. I'm going to turn off my breakpoint and I'm going to stop the debug and go back to running the editor normally. Let's see if that's what it took to remove the error. That looks pretty promising. We now have our connect for running in the game. We can go in and we can add new pieces. We're competing with our opponent and hopefully they're not smart enough to stop us. There we go from winning. Perfect. And if I play again, it seems to continue running. So that is all working pretty well at a glance. Not seeing anything immediately wrong in how it's operating and we may have solved our problems. Let's take one step further though. Let's go and take a look at the game controller and let's take a look at our parameters. And let's say I wanna change the amount of time it takes to drop the file. I'll go in here. I'm going to say, all right, I want it to drop over a shorter period. So I'll change that to 0 0.1. Want it to be instant, it's almost falling down immediately. Oh, and here's something, I don't have an error message, but I wanted to turn down the amount of time it takes for the pieces to fall, and yet now they're taking much longer. This is probably just a simple math issue, but it illustrates the third method of troubleshooting that can be very helpful, um, and that is to actually talk through your code. So often, again, this goes back to assumptions, we're walking through something very quickly, and we make assumptions about what we have or haven't fixed already. Uh, at this point, we already know all the functions, we already know all the methods, but we've put in something without realizing it. And anytime we skim through it, our eyes just gloss over the problem. Use this, uh, I've heard it called the rubber duck method. Go line by line, explain it to a person, to an inanimate object, but talk through your code find the problem that way because so many times the moment you bring someone else in they don't need to solve it for you you solve it yourself because you took the time to explain it to someone else uh, and let's prove that point so i'm working with drop time here it should be the approximate duration that i want the piece to fall so i'll search for drop time pardon me search for it without a space we have our time delta, we have our drop time times number of rows minus distance plus one. So what is this supposed to be doing? This is supposed to check if time is less than one, it will continue to loop through. It's going to take T for time um, and it's going to increment it upwards based on the delta times the drop time uh, multiplied by the number of rows minus the distance plus one. So basically what we're saying is that this is going to be based on how far it has left to fall. If there's fewer pieces, you know, it won't still take 20 seconds or however long it is, it'll take less time. Um, and then the drop time is going to be uh, a multiplier here so that we can increase how long it takes. Ah, and there's the issue, right? I think we all saw it coming. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to increase the time it takes by having multiplication with drop time because this is looking for when t is no longer less than one, right? This is supposed to be decreasing. And to do that, I'm gonna try 1.0 over drop time. Oh, pardon my notation, I'm missing my F, there we go. 1.0 float over drop time so that as drop time increases, everything slows down. Or I may have said that backwards. Let's try that one more time. Drop time should be faster, right, right. So the duration, the time, should be faster now rather than slower when I play. Oh, fast mode, there we go. That's what we were looking for. 
All right, so in this little overview, we talked about um, searching for things when you have your compile issues, going to the official documentation before you get more specific, since oftentimes too many specific details can cause issues for finding rel uh, relevant information. Uh, we've talked about using breakpoints when you have runtime issues, so you can point out where the code is failing and oftentimes where you're running into null references. And we briefly talked about, you know, this idea of like talking through your code, explaining it to someone, explaining it to a rubber duck, whatever it needs to be, so you can find the point where you have a problem and solve it uh, before you bring it to someone else. Um, the last note on this is if all that fails, definitely do reach out to others and try to find an answer from the community Go to the Unity forums, go to Stack Overflow, put together a good question. Um, the components of a good question are always include the exact version number of Unity you're working with, um, be as descriptive as possible, and try to uh, give people a way to reproduce your problem. Don't just say, I'm having a problem with the function, it won't do this. Give a code snippet, make it as easy as possible for people to assist you by replicating your problem. That'll be the fastest way you'll get your solution. That covers everything. I hope that uh, people found this a little bit informative or at least interesting to hear one person's process. And I hope to see you in the next lesson.